breadth. An important policy question concerns the efficient breadth of a patent. To understand the difference in incentive effects between narrow and broad patents, contrast two inventors, two inventions, and two rules. Assume that two inventors are contemplating investing in research on two inventions. The first invention would improve oil cracking processes and the second invention would provide a substitute for lead in gasoline. The inventors expect the two inventions to be similar but not identical. Under a broad rule, a single patent would encompass both inventions because the party who makes the first invention receives exclusive rights to both inventions the party who makes the first discovery gets all of the profits and the other party gets nothing thus the broad rule encourages fast duplicative research in contrast under a narrow rule a separate patent would be required for each invention. The party who makes the first invention would receive exclusive rights to it and the party who makes the second invention would have exclusive property rights to it. Thus the narrow rule encourages slower complementary research. To appreciate this contrast between broad and narrow patents, consider a typical relationship between research and development. Research sometimes yields a pioneering discovery with no immediate commercial value, but with large commercial potential. To realize its potential, a pioneering discovery must be developed and brought to market Development involves a series of small improvements. A patented pioneering invention can be followed by a valuable application patented by another inventor. In such cases, U.S. law has an interesting feature. Neither party can use the application without the other's permission. As long as both patents endure, the owner of the application cannot use his patent without a license from the owner of the pioneering invention. And the owner of the pioneering invention cannot use the application without a license from its owner. The result is that they have to negotiate with each other and reach an agreement before anyone can use the application and make money from it. U.S. patent law for pioneering inventions and applications creates an incentive for each to bargain with the other. These mutual rights get triggered when the subsequent invention is an application of the prior invention. The legal question is how broadly the pioneering discovery extends over the follow-on inventions. Broad patents encourage fundamental research and narrow patents encourage development. Thus, suppose that an investment of $100,000 in research yields a pioneering invention that has no commercial value. Subsequently, an investment of $50,000 in development yields an improvement to the pioneering invention that has commercial value of $1 million. If the law grants broad patents, a patent for the pioneering invention would also cover the improvement. But if the law grants narrow patents, a separate patent would be required for the pioneering invention and the improvement. What breadth of patents is most efficient? If the social value of investment 
on fundamental research exceeds the social value of investment on developing applications, then patents should be broadened. Conversely, if the social value of investment on developing applications exceeds the social value of investment on fundamental research, then patents should be narrowed.